All right, so um, I want to start looking at the um, next section, um, which will be log functions. And uh, if you remember from last year, a log function logarithm is simply just the inverse of an exponential function. It undoes it, right? Just like we have to have a square root function to um, undo a square. We have to have division to undo multiplication. We have to have subtraction to undo addition. So we have to have a logarithm to undo an exponential function. And so um, like the first one, we just want to see like maybe the behavior of these log functions, like what do they look like? And since I know that they're going to be defined as the inverse um, of an exponential function, like when I want to graph e to the x, like I know that it goes through 0, 1, and we kind of hug the, um, the uh, x-axis because that's a horizontal asymptote. And we know we said it goes through 0, 1. We know y equals 0 is the asymptote. That just kind of goes through here. And then um, that would be my f of x. But then it also says, now sketch the graph of its inverse. And even if you don't know what the inverse is called, you do know that functions and inverses are always symmetric across the line y equals x. So then I would know that that point of uh, 0, 1 can now become 1, 0. And I know that if y equals 0 was the asymptote, then by switching y to x, x equals 0 becomes the asymptote. And so what you end up getting is a function that looks like that. Okay, so, so even though I'm calling this the inverse function of f of x, which was this one, I also know that this is going to be my general shape of a log function, right? So this actually is the natural log of x, because if you remember from last year, log base e uh, has its own name, right? It's the natural log of x. Um, and so if, if you take a look, what are, what are these log functions going to have because they're inverses of, of exponentials? So they'll always have an x-intercept of 1, 0. Um, because again, it's switching the x and the y. And then instead of having y equals 0 as a horizontal asymptote, they'll have x equals 0 as a vertical asymptote. So um, those are the key features that you'd want to sort of sketch um, as we start graphing those. Um, and I just said that, right? Inverse of an exponential function is a logarithmic function, log function. And every log has a specific base. And it's all based on, <laughs> pun intended, uh, it's all based on what your base of your exponent was. Okay. So, um, and, and just to kind of get this sense of inverse, um, part of the homework is going to ask you to find inverses. So if, if you have like f of x equals 2 to the x, we could think of it as y equals 2 to the x. We can switch that around. So x equals 2 to the y. And see, the thing is, is that the only way you can get an exponent out of the which I variable out of the exponent is if you do a logarithm. So I'm going to take the base. I'm going to do log base 2 of x is equal to y. So when you do, uh, like if you want to move this out of that exponent position, then you have to do log base 2 of each side. Now, in theory, and I guess it's more of a technical thing, what you're doing is you're saying, okay, log base 2 of 2 to the y. And as soon as you have log base 2 and a 2, that cancels that. So, like, that's sort of a, like a understood step, I guess, or something maybe you would have talked about last year, too. Um, but it's good to review. And so we could say, here's our inverse. Like, so, uh, oops, sorry. Uh, so, f inverse of x is equal to, oh, I guess I've done it here. f inverse of x is equal to log base 2 of x. Okay. So, here, same idea. Make it... Um, this was like y equals 3 to the x plus 1. So now we just switch it. We make it x equals. x equals 3 to the y plus 1. And as soon as your x, as soon as your, um, yeah, as soon as your, like, exponent here, like, it's all by itself, like, in, like I don't have to subtract 4, like, in the next example. I'm going to take the base of this, um, base of this exponent, so it's 3. So it's log base 3 of x. And then technically we're doing log base 3 of 3 to the y plus 1 as a quantity. And the 3s would cancel, so all I have left is that y plus 1. So log base 3 of x equals y plus 1. So we subtract that 1. 
So log base three of x, and then put that in parentheses so I wouldn't get confused that when I subtract one, like I know it's outside of that parentheses. So then I can say here it's inverse, right? Inverse is log base three of x minus one. Okay, so let's do the next one. And if honestly, if you want to, you can pause the video and try it and then check your work, it's fine. Um, so call this um, x equals 10 to the y minus four. So I want to isolate this. So I'm going to add the four over. So it's x plus four equals 10 to the y. And now I can log uh, to base 10 both sides. And that's a whole quantity. So then that's log base 10 of 10 to the y. And as long as they're the same, they cancel. Notice I had this as a quantity. Now, last year, you may also remember that log base 10 gets its own <laughs> kind of logarithm too um, because it's called common log. It's the common base. So if you just saw log of x plus 4, you have an understood um, connotation as base 10. So there could be a subscript of 10 there. Either way, it's the same. As, you know, they're equivalent. Uh, equals the inverse. Okay, uh, last one. So again, call this x equals 4 to the negative 2y plus 5. So the, the like as long as that exponential expression is by itself with the, the base here, you uh, are ready to go. So it's log base 4 both sides. And then that equals negative 2y plus 5. Um, so now i got to subtract 5 on the outside of that log. So log base 4 of x minus 5 uh, equals negative 2y, and then divide by negative 2. So a little bit more complicated of an expression, but that's fine. Um, so then we have the inverse function is equal to log base 4 of x minus 5 all over negative two. And, and again, I'm hoping that just knowing how we find inverses and knowing a little bit about logs from last year, hopefully that's okay. Now, um, so then I also want to, um, you know, remind you uh, again about those, you know, just, okay, if you see natural log um, of X here, um, you know, here's what you should be thinking. Like every log gra graph, remember natural log is log base E, uh, every log graph is going to have a vertical asymptote and a point one comma zero. So I know that there's going to be a vertical asymptote, and I'm going to go ahead and label that at x equals zero. And I know it's going to go through one zero. So I want to make sure I label that. And then everything else, you know, like, I mean, like you come to that point and you do kind of your sharp turn, just like an exponential function. So I'm really close to the asymptote. Oh, I thought I'd change the color and then go this way. And it does flatten out. It's not completely flat. It's not a diagonal. It should flatten out. Because think about like what was our, our reflection here was where we went here and went straight up like an exponential function. So the steepness of this sort of gets mirrored as like the, the I don't know, like the way it extends along the x-axis. So kind of want to watch that shape. Now, we need probably other points. And so since this is like basically counting log base or counting base E's, really, right? Because that's like really log base E of X. Then in order to get over to, let's say, 2, you need to make sure that you have two of these bases. So so you need E squared. And then, um, oh, sorry, uh, yeah, E squared. Um, uh, let's see. I have to rearrange that. I have to say if I wanted 2, I'm sorry. Uh, as the output, I need to make sure I go, oh, I want to make sure I have uh, e squared uh, for that value. So, no, nope, I did it right. Wow, brain fart. So this, if I want one on the other side, uh, let's go e comma one first. If I want to have a height of one, I was getting ahead of myself. So that's e. And then if this is e squared, there it is. <laughs> See, just testing, right, seeing if you're paying attention. e squared will give you a height of two. Because, again, you're counting that exponent. Because this one technically would have been e to the 0. Okay. Um, and it, I know, I get it. It's a little bit more complicated or a little bit uh, more abstract because you're dealing with e instead of instead of like a 2 or 3. And, and we'll get there, I promise. Um, now, this is our general shape. 
um, other than my mess up <laughs> of counting E's, I think it looks very nice. Um, now this negative, just like all, every other transformation, this negative is outside. So it's going to affect the Y values. So it's going to turn everything over the X axis and make this image upside down. So then what that image looks like again. So thinking about reflecting that. Here's our x-axis, here's our y-axis. Notice that doing a, a reflection over the x-axis doesn't affect our vertical asymptote. So it's still going to be at zero, and it doesn't ref, doesn't affect our x-intercept. It's still going to be at uh, 1, 0. But what it does affect is the way our graph is, is drawn. So instead of starting down here and going up, we are going to be starting up here. And then we take that and we kind of flatten out and extend along the x-axis. Okay. So then, again, going over E would be, um, so E comma negative 1 because of this negative in front. And then this would be E squared. Oops, sorry, E squared. So that would be E squared and negative 2. If you wanted to have nice values, quote, unquote, for your, um, your y values. Okay, let's go ahead and do the last two transformations here to, to end up this video. Um, a negative x. So inside the log, now we're affecting the x values. So that's a reflection just like the all the other transformations. That's a reflection over the y axis. So x and y. So we're reflecting over that direction. So it doesn't affect our vertical asymptote, but it does affect our intercept. So our vertical asymptote is still, I forgot to label that one. Um, it's still x equals 0. All right. But instead of one zero, this becomes negative one zero because we reflected across the y axis because all of our x's have changed spots. And then again, we start really close and we kind of take this sort of sharp turn out in that direction. Um, labeling. So I've got to go out to E, actually negative E to get to one on the y axis. And I have to get out to negative E squared if I want to get to two. Okay, so then um, that, that again, but think about that image, which is a reflection of the normal log function. And then this last one, you know, just to do a double reflection, right? So, and I just wanted you to, you to see that log base E is the same thing as the natural log of, of X, doesn't matter if you call it log base E, but um, it's more natural, haha, pun intended. It's more natural. If you see it that way, that's probably how you'll see it. So we need to do a double reflection. So we've already done each of them separately, right? Look at part C, that was the negative X. And then part um, uh, B was the opposite of L and X. Now, technically, you should be doing this reflection first. So I'll do the inner one first. So I knew I had this this image going for me. So um, in, and notice that in both reflections, I'm still going to have the vertical asymptote uh, at uh, x equals zero. So like my first one would be what I saw in part C, looking something like this. And then that's the image that I'm going to take and flip upside down. So um, maybe I'll do this nice blue. And so it's still going to go through negative one zero. There we go. Um, but but it's but again reflecting this yellow image over the x-axis. So now it's starting up here and going out in this direction. Okay. So and again, what is that point? We said it was negative one zero, and then if we wanted to get like to a y value of one, we better go negative e, and actually it becomes negative one, and then out here would be like negative e squared and negative two. And as long as you pick powers of your base, like whatever that power is, then that's your outcome. And that's the whole thing what a log does. And I'm going to stress this a lot when we get into the next unit, that all a logarithm does is count how many exponents you have. It's like an exponent counter. Um, and so um, that, you know, like sometimes we have this unknown or abstract feeling towards logs, like what is it really measuring? It's just counting how many exponents you have. Okay, so um, look through this, make sure those are filled out in terms of your notes, and then we'll look at the next video.